Today is day four of this grief journey and I'm actually having a little bit of survivor's guilt <clears throat> because like, well, why did Loki live and Harley die? Not that I would want Loki to go anywhere. Like, I'm super thankful and glad that it wasn't Loki, but at the same time, like, well, crap, how do I react now that when I go back home to see Loki, like, should I not be as happy to see Loki as I would be if Leslie got to see Harley? Should I kind of, like, dim down my excitement to see my cat just because Har Harley isn't here anymore? Um, so that's one thing that's been going through my head. The other thing that's been going through my head is... Well, should I let Loki now become the family cat instead of my own therapy cat? Um, like, I feel like now I have to share the thing that's mine because someone else doesn't have what they, they used to have. Does that make sense? And... I was talking to my partner about it and he he brought up a great solution he said if Loki is on Leslie's lap and if I don't need my cat to just let her have some cuddles have some kitten time um if Loki is cuddling me and then gets up and goes over to cuddle Leslie. It's my... It's up to me to figure out what my needs are in that moment. So do I need the support of my animal right now? Or can I let someone else get some kitty loves? So that made, that made this a little better, but I think another thing that's a part of all of this is it all goes back to childhood trauma, okay? <clears throat> when you grow up in a house that things are giving, like, they're given to you, and then something happens because... As another sibling doesn't have their thing anymore so that means you have to give up your thing for them um, and so because that happened a lot in my childhood I fear that oh now that someone else doesn't have what they have it is now my job or it's not my job but it's I'm not as important, so now my stuff is now theirs, and that is very much a childhood trauma trait, not trait, but like trauma, it's, it's a trauma, so it's really nice to be in a family where you can vocalize your fears and have them validated and being like, hey, you know what, yeah, I am sad that my cat died, but your cat is yours. Like, I'm not going to take away your thing just because I don't have my thing anymore. And so that's something that I really am having to get used to, along with learning how to handle grief and emotions and everything, because when a pet died, in my childhood, it was, okay, you can spend, like, a couple of days on this, and then hurry up, you gotta, like, snap back to normal. But now that I'm in a healthy relationship, it's like, no, you take the time to mourn 
and you take as long as you need. It's it's not a, you have three days to get over this. That's not it. That's not the case. So that's something that I've been dealing with today is that just because, yeah, it, it's really sad that Leslie doesn't have her cat anymore, but that doesn't mean that now I have to go without just to make someone else happy happy. So, and on the other side of it, I still can't believe she's gone. My, I was talking to my dad and he said that my stepmom <clears throat> was talking about how it's going to really suck because it's, we're going to be going through like two mourning periods. We're, get, we're going through the first one of the initial, like finding out she's dead. And then the second one of the first week or so that we're back home, and we only have one cat in the house. Like, that's gonna really suck. So we'll see how the days go. Um, we're gonna start cleaning up the house, getting things organized and put back in the places that we found it. And then on Thursday, we're out of here and I get to see my baby girl.